Hello, women made in the image of God. Today we get to read the word together. So um, yeah, today I realized that all this time we've been reading the plan on the wrong, like the wrong plan, uh, but it's, it's the same exact stuff. So we don't have to like catch up on anything, uh, but we were in the 2023 plan and uh this is the 2024 plan the 2023 didn't have the leap year day because it wasn't a leap year <laughs> um but yeah we're we're on schedule with the same stuff so um nothing has changed except for that we get to have the leap year day so uh scratch what i said in the end of last video <laughs> and we get a video today um but yeah you'll still be able to catch up on the weekend with anything you want to so let's pray and then we get to read um, Numbers 26 to 27 and Mark 8, 22 to 9, uh, chapter 9. So praise the Lord. Let's, let's uh, pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for allowing us to gather and read your word. Um, please, please, um, please lead us and guide us in this time. Thank you that you are holy and uh, beautiful altogether, God. Please um, help us to see that as we read. Please show us your gospel as we read. Uh, please remind us of the beauty and the love of Christ. And the just how much of a treasure Jesus is. Um, please just um, please sanctify us by your, your word. Or sanctify us by your sanctify us by your truth, for your word is truth, Lord. Um Help us to trust and believe in you and um, to just believe the things that you've said in your word and, and to love you the way you deserve to be loved, God. Um, please grow us in that today as we, we read together. And um, yeah, thank you for thank you for today, God. Thank you for allowing us to read. Please help us to be completely dependent on your holy spirit to teach us please please god would you give us open eyes open ears to to an open heart to hear what you have to say today god um please um open our minds to understand your scriptures um and help us please to not lean on our own understanding but in all our ways to submit to you um that uh yeah that you would make our path straight for you um to you towards you that you would lead us on the narrow path that leads to you that you would help us to follow and love jesus because jesus first loved um his people in jesus name amen okay so numbers 26 let's get right into the word Did we read yesterday? I feel like we read. Hold on. Maybe I'm tripping. Give me one second. No, we didn't read 26. Well, at least we weren't supposed to. <laughs> Anyways, so numbers 26. Okay. about that I just added like an unnecessary 30 seconds to the video okay numbers 26 after the plague the Lord said to Moses and to Eliezer the son of Aaron the priest Take a census of all the congregation of the people of Israel, from twenty years old and upward by their fathers' houses, all in Israel who are able to go to war. And Moses and Eleazar the priest spoke with them in the plains of Moab, by the Jordan at Jericho, saying, Take a census of the people from twenty years old and upward. As the Lord commanded Moses. The people of Israel who came out of the land of Egypt were Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, the sons of Reuben, of Hanak, the clan of the Hanakites, of Palu, the clan of the Paluites, of Hezron, the clan of the Hezronites, of Carmi, the clan of the Carmites. 
These are the clans of the Reubenites, and those listed were 43,730, and the sons of Palu, Eliab. The sons of Eliab, Nemuel, Dathan, and Abiram. These are the Dathan and Abiram chosen from the congregation who contended against Moses and Aaron in the company of Korah when they contended against the Lord, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up together with Korah when that company died, when the fire devoured 250 men, and they became a warning. But the sons of Korah did not die. The sons of Simeon, according to their clans, of Nemuel, the clan of the Nemuelites, of Jamin, the clan of the Jamanites, of Jacon, the clan of the Jaconites, of Zerah, the clan of the Zerahites, of Shaul, the clan of the Shaulites. These are the clans of the Simeonites, 22,200. The sons of Gad, according to their clans, of Zephon, the clan of the Zephonites, of Haggi, the clan of the Haggites, of Shunai, the clan of the Shunites, of Oznai, the clan of the Oznites, of Eri, the clan of the Erites, of Erod, the clan of the Erodites, of Areli, the clan of the Arelites. These are the clans of the sons of Gad as they were listed, 40,500. The sons of Judah were Ur and Onan, and Ur and Onan died in the land of Canaan. And the sons of Judah, according to their clans, were of Shelah, the clan of the Shelanites, of Heriz, the clan of the Perizzites, of Zerah, the clan of the Zerahites. And the sons of Heriz were of Hezron, the clan of the Hezronites, of Hamel, the clan of the Hamelites. These are the clans of Judah as they were listed, 76,500. The sons of Issachar, according to their clans, of Tola, the clan of the Tolaites, of Puva, the clan of the Punites, of Jashub, the clan of the Jashubites, of Shimron, the clan of the Shimronites. These are the clans of Issachar as they were listed, 64,300. The sons of Zebulun, according to their clans, of Sirid, the clan of the Sirodites, of Elon, the clan of the Elonites, of Jaliel, the clan of the Jalielites. These are the clans of the Zebulonites as they were listed, 60,500. The sons of Joseph, according to their clans, Manasseh and Ephraim. The sons of Manasseh, of Machir, the clan of the Machirites. And Machir was the father of Gilead, of Gilead, the clan of the Gileadites. These are the sons of Gilead of Aizer, the clan of the Aizerites, of Helic, the clan of the Helicites, and of Asriel, the clan of the Asrielites, and of Shechem, the clan of the Shechemites, and of Shemida, the clan of the Shemidaites, and of Hefer, the clan of the Heferites. Now Zelophehad, the son of Hefer, had no sons, but daughters, and the names of the daughters of Zelophehad were Mala, Noah, Hogla, Milcah, and Tirzah. These are the clans of Manasseh, and those listed were 52,700. These are the sons of Ephraim, according to their clans of Shuthalah, the clan of the Shuthalahites, of Beker, the clan of the Bekerites, of Tehan, the clan of the Tehanites, and these are the sons of Shuthalah, of Iran, the clan of the Iranites. These are the clans of the sons of Ephraim, as they were listed, 32,500. These are the sons of Joseph, according to their clans, the sons of Benjamin, according to their clans, of Bela, the clan of the Belaites, of Ashbel, the clan of the Ashbelites, of Ahiram, the clan of the Ahiramites, of Shephupham, the clan of the Shephuphamites, of Hupham, the clan of the Hupamites, and the sons of Bela were Ard and Naaman, of Ard, the clan of the Ardites, of Naaman, the clan of the Naamites. These are the sons of Benjamin, according to their clans, and those listed were 45,600. These are the sons of Dan, according to their clans, of Shuham, the clan of the Shuhamites. These are the clans of Dan, according to their clans. All the clans of the Shuhamites, as they were listed, were 64,400. The sons of Asher, according to their clans, of Imna, the clan of the Imnites, of Ishbi, the clan of the Ishbites, of Bariah, the clan of the Bariahites, of the sons of Bariah, of Heber, the clan of the Heberites, of Malkiel, the clan of the Malkielites, and the name of the daughter of Asher was Sira. These are the clans of the sons of Asher as they were listed, 53,400. The sons of Naphtali, according to their clans, of Jaziel, the clan of the Jazielites, of Gunai, the clan of the Gunites, of Jezer, the clan of the Jezerites, of Shilam, the clan of the Shilamites. These are the clans of Naphtali, according to their clans, and those listed were 45,400. This was the list of the people of Israel, 601,730. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Among these the land shall be divided for inheritance according to the number of names. To a large tribe you shall give a large inheritance, and to a small tribe you shall give a small inheritance. Every tribe shall be given its inheritance in proportion to its list. But the land shall be divided by lot. According to the names of the tribes of their fathers they shall inherit. Their inheritance shall be divided according to lot between the larger and the smaller. This was the list of the Levites according to their clans, of Gershon, the clan of the Gershonites, of Kohath, the clan of the Kohathites, of Merari, the clan of the Merarites. These are the clans of Levi, the clan of the Libnites, the clan of the Hebronites, the clan of the Malites, the clan of the Mushites, the clan of the Korahites. And Kohath was the father of Amram. The name of Amram's wife was Jochebed, the daughter of Levi, who was born to Levi in Egypt. And she bore to Amram Aaron and Moses and Miriam their sister. And to Aaron were born Nadab, Abihu, Eliezer, and Ithamar. 
But Nadab and Abihu died when they offered unauthorized fire before the Lord. And those listed were twenty-three thousand, every male from a month old and upward. For they were not listed among the people of Israel, because there was no inheritance given to them among the people of Israel. These were those listed by Moses and Eleazar the priest, who listed the people of Israel in the plains of Moab by the Jordan at Jericho. But among these there was not one of those listed by Moses and Aaron the priest, who had listed the people of Israel in the wilderness of Sinai. For the Lord had said of them, They shall die in the wilderness. Not one of them was left, except Caleb the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua the son of Nun. Numbers 27. Then drew near the daughters of... Okay, well, let's check out the notes for that section. Um, so, so this is going over the notes, is highlighting a section 26, this chapter, all the way through 36, 13. And it says, <coughs> a moment, hold on. All right, so it says the final major section of numbers concerns preparations for entering the promised land with particular attention paid to matters relevant to life in the land. Okay, um, and then this note is uh, for uh, most the majority of this chapter. It says, like the census taken 38 years earlier in chapter 1, uh, this second census counts only males aged 20 or older able to serve in the army. It records only the total number for each tribe, though in each case the names of the tribe subdivisions are included. Overall, there has been a decline of nearly 2,000 in the number, the total number of fighting men. The census reveals that all of the men counted previously, of all the men counted previously, only Joshua and Caleb remain alive to enter the land of Canaan. Yeah, because they were like, nah, y'all are tripping. <laughs> Don't blaspheme God and stuff. That, that was probably about the worst paraphrase you could ever get. So just go back to earlier chapters if you want to read what actually happened. If you want to refresh your memory. Because, wow. <laughs> that was bad. Anyways. <clears throat> 26, 5 through 11. The tribe of Jacob's eldest son, Reuben, is listed first. Although it suffered losses because of the uh, rebellion of Dathan and Abiram, it has recovered sufficiently to be almost as numerous as the first census. Korah, the tribe of Levi, is mentioned here because of his association with Dathan and Abiram, and it is observed that his line has not died out. Yeah, but the sons of Korah did not die. Um... So 26, 12 through 14. Simeon's numbers have declined far more than those of any other tribe, from nearly 60,000 to little over 22,000, probably indicating that the Simeonite leader killed during, uh, during the Midianite seduction shortly before this, um, before this census was taken. But one of thousands of Simeonites involved in the Midianite seduction. Oh, but what was but one of Midianite seduction shortly before this census was taken was but one of thousands of Simeonites involved in the Midianite seduction. Okay. Divide, scatter, sharing an inclination 
um, toward destructive anger and cruelty, Simeon and Levi pose a threat to peace. Um, Genesis 34, uh, 25 to 31. After the exodus from Egypt, the tribe of Simeon declines in importance and is not mentioned in Moses' blessing. Deuteronomy 33. Simeon's lack of strength as a tribe is also reflected in the fact that the Simeonites are all, are allowed, sorry, are allotted cities within the territory taken by the tribe of Judah and do not get their own li- land. Joshua 19.1, similar 1 through 9. Similarly, the priestly tribe of Levi is allotted cities. Okay, so Ur and Onan, it wants us to see these this section. 1 through 10. So pause and read that. And it wants to see these notes. So um, Judah went down from Hebron and hill country to the lowlands. The family further degenerates by this loyalty. Okay. Oh, it wants us to see the note that's right next to the it's the last one Ur I think yeah, because he decreased Ur was the firstborn his heir would have inherited his position of family leadership and double portion um, 3711 note uh, desiring the place of the firstborn for himself uh, second born Onan has intercourse with Tamar but prevents conception of a cha- child and so doing he's both uh, he is in so doing, he is unfair to both his deceased brother and Tamar. Oh, was that that? Is that like the... Yikes. I think that's like the really like brutal thing where they like kill him. I didn't read the notes, so... Or read the... Let's see. Oh, this is a different one. I was thinking of a different thing. Different uh, account. Okay. Anyways, I guess they just wanted us to see that 2619, the sons of Judah were Ur and Onan, and Ur and Onan died in the land of Canaan. Yeah. Um, and here's this and these. And then, yeah. So then, uh, Here's a note from for 52 to 56 says the promised land is to, to be to be divided in proportion to the size of each group lo- with locations decided by lot. Okay, so 27. Numbers 27. Then drew near the daughters of Zelophehad, the son of Hefer, son of Gilead, son of Mekir, son of Manasseh, from the clans of Manasseh, the son of Joseph. The names of his daughters were Mala, Noah, Hagla, Milcah, and Tirzah. And they stood before Moses and before Eleazar the priest, and before the chiefs and all the congregation, at the entrance of the tent of meeting, saying, Our father died in the wilderness. He was not among the company of those who gathered themselves together against the Lord in the company of Korah, but died for his own sin. And he had no sons. Why should the name of our father be taken away from his clan because he had no son? Give to us a possession among our father's brothers. Moses brought their case before the Lord, and the Lord said to Moses, The daughters of Zelophehad are right. You shall give them possession of an inheritance among their father's brothers, and transfer the inheritance of their father to them. And you shall speak to the people of Israel, saying, If a man dies and has no son, then you shall transfer his inheritance to his daughter. And if he has no daughter, then you shall give his inheritance to his brothers. And if he has no brothers, then you shall give his inheritance to his father's brothers. And if his father has no brothers, then you shall give his inheritance to the nearest kinsman of his clan, and he shall possess it. And it shall be for the people of Israel a statute and rule, as the Lord commanded Moses. The Lord said to Moses, Go up into this mountain of Abraham and see the land that I have given to the people of Israel. When you have seen it, you also shall be gathered to your people as your brother Aaron was, because you rebelled against my word in the wilderness of Zin when the congregation quarreled, failing to uphold me as holy at the waters before their eyes. These are the waters of Meribah of Kadesh in the wilderness of Zin. Moses spoke to the Lord, saying, Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, appoint a man over the congregation, who shall go out before them and come in before them, who shall lead them out and bring them in, that the congregation of the Lord may not be as sheep that have no shepherd. So the Lord said to Moses, Take Joshua the son of Nun, a man in whom is the Spirit, and lay your hand on him. Make him stand before Eleazar the priest in all the congregation, and you shall commission him in their sight. You shall invest him with some of your authority, that all the congregation of the people of Israel may obey. 
and he shall stand before Eliezer the priest, who shall inquire for him by the judgment of the Urim before the Lord. At his word they shall go out, and at his word they shall come in, both he and all the people of Israel with him, the whole congregation. And Moses did as the Lord commanded him. He took Joshua and made him stand before Eliezer the priest and the whole congregation. And he laid his hands on him and commissioned him as the Lord directed through Moses. Numbers 20. Okay, so just love that. Okay, um, rules for inheritance of land. So it's 27, 1 through 11. Uh, rules for inheritance of land, which notably include women, are explained after the account of Zepho Zelophead. Zelophiad's daughters. These legal requirements are similar in form to those listed in Exodus uh, 21, 1 through 22, 17. Zepholiad had died without leaving a male heir, and his daughters petitioned Moses as, and the leaders to allow the daughters to inherit their father's portion in the land and not to let his name be cut off. The names of all five daughters are recorded in verse 1. Hmm. In chapter 36, a related question is raised by the tribal leaders. If the daughters of Zevlofiad marry men of a different tribe, will their father's inheritance be transferred to that tribe? In response to both, the que both questions, the Lord answers that the family and tribal legacies should be protected. These protections, as well as the prohib prohibition against permanent transfer of land from one family to another, are rooted in God's ultimate ownership of the promised land. Um, the land shall not be solid and protruding, for the land is mine. You are strangers and sojourners with me. Yeah. Um, God's ultimate ownership of the promised land and the fact that he has entrusted it to all his people as a good gift and permanent possession to be enjoyed. Hmm. The land is not simply private property to be transferred on the basis of human convention and agreement. Rather, it symbolizes life with God. Yeah. The land is not simply private property to be transferred but on the basis of human convention and agreement. Rather, it simplifies, it symbolizes, sorry, rather it symbolizes, symbolizes life with God. Beautiful. Okay, um, which is forever <laughs> to be enjoyed. Moses is not permitted to enter the promised land, but only to see it from a distance. This is a punishment for his failure at Meribah. It's when he, yeah, God's word of Meribah. God's word of judgment is directed to both Moses and Aaron, for Aaron has accompanied Moses and is, is implicated that in the rashness of his brother's action, their ministry is coming to an end. Yeah, he striked it with... He didn't follow what the Lord told him to do in haste and so forth. Moses previously put his hand on Joshua to symbolize the transfer of divinely ordained leadership. Numbers 27-18 God empowers those whom he chooses and ordains for service. Thank you, Jesus. Um, invest, in, invest him with some of your authority. Moses' office and ministry are unique, but a portion of his honor and authority will be imparted to Joshua. Okay, so now we get to finish... Um, 18, uh, 20, uh, sorry, not 18. We get to finish chapter 8 of Mark. So, yeah, let's do it. Not yet understand. And they came to Bethsaida, and some people brought to him a blind man and begged him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. And when he had spit on his eyes and laid his hands on him, he asked him, do you see anything? And he looked up and said, I 
see, man. But they look like trees walking. Then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again, and he opened his eyes. His sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. And he sent him to his home, saying, Do not even enter the village. And Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they told him, John the Baptist, and others say Elijah, and others one of the prophets. And he asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Christ. And he strictly charged them to tell no one about him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things, and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. And he said this plainly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. And calling the crowd to him with his disciples, he said to them, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? For what can a man give in return for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Mark 9. We're going to listen to that part one more time. Mark? That's last section there. Get behind me, Satan. I'm going to read it. For you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. And calling the crowd to him with his disciples, he said to them, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? For what can a man give in return for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Alright, one more no. one more time. Mark So eight. so important. And seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. For you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. And calling the crowd to him with his disciples, he said to them, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? For what can a man give in return for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Yeah, um, so all of this chapter is beautiful, amazing, um, but the reason why I repeated that several times is because that's so important. Like, I really recommend, like, writing down the highlighted section. Um, we're going to go over some of the notes, but yeah, I just wanted to say that, uh, and then I'll make any final comments at the end of reading the notes. Um 
feel free to read this note and feel free to pause and read that. Um, just zoom in if you need to on it. And then, um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna read this. So twenty four, verse twenty four is what they're jumping off of, uh, where it says, "And he looked up and said, I see people, but they look like trees walking." The restoration, the restoration of sight in this case is gradual. It is surpri- surprising that it requires two steps, considering that the considering the immediate and complete healing of a deaf and mute man who was likewise brought by others and taken by Jesus to a private location for the healing. Um, The incremental cure is not because Jesus' healing power is limited. Rather, it illustrates the condition of his disciples who are beginning to perceive Jesus' true identity, as Peter will confess. Verse 29, Yet often seem to have eyes without seeing and ears without hearing. Yeah. Do not enter the village. Uh, Jesus is led out. Jesus led him out of the town, so it is likely that the message of this miracle is intended for his disciples. They must realize that Jesus is, gra- is gradually healing their spiritual sight. Wow. Uh, while in verse twenty-one, they still do not understand who Jesus is, like the blind man, but they are about to see more clearly the mystery of his person but not with the full clarity that they ought to have and after the resurrection of Jesus will have. Um, Feel free to read this section, this note here. Pause and read and, uh, and then who do you say that I am? Again, the preeminence of the twelve and the re- revelation of Jesus, of the person of Jesus, is emphasized. Jesus dimi- dismisses what people say, but acknowledges and retains as divinely revealed truth the confession of the twelve. Oh. The Christ, the Anointed One. This is the first time in Mark's narrative of the events that the name Christ appears. It does not appear in the title at 1-1. Peter's confession, as spokesperson for the Twelve, along with the transfiguration that follows, is a high point in the revelation of Jesus, uh, Jesus' person, and a turning point in his earthly ministry. From now on, his teaching will concentrate his impending death, and he will soon begin to travel to Jerusalem. Um, hindsight, the reason is clear. Jesus will not allow political notions of messiahship to compromise his true calling as a suffering messiah, whose essentially moral and spiritual work of redemption will be total. Mm. Free to uh, read that. You know what? I'm going to read it. Um, this section recounts the turning point of Jesus' earthly ministry. It contains three predictions of Jesus' death and resurrection, relates the beginning of his journey to Jerusalem, and gives sustained teaching on the true messiahship and discipleship. Son of man. Um, that's note. Yeah. Jesus uses this phrase regularly to designate himself, associating himself in his ministry with the heavenly Son of Man. death and resurrection yeah behind this small world word is all the weight of scriptural prophecy and divinely ordained necessi- necessity jesus's predictions concerning his death and resurrection come out of his understanding of the old testament scriptures that he wrote <laughs> through the inspiration of the spirit but anyways uh suffer many things the prediction of the suffering messiah comes particularly from isaiah 52 to 53 see also zechariah 9 um, 12 and 13 and the Old Testament generally for the theme of righteous sufferer 
Suffering marked the lives of the Old Testament figures such as Joseph, Moses, David, and many of the prophets. Yeah. Elders, lay members of the Sanhedrin, the court that governed Jesus or er, Jewish affairs in Jesus' day. Um, yep, the court was composed of elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law. Chief priests. Jesus predicts that the healthy that the wealthy high priestly families are, who are affiliated with the Sadducees will be involved in his death. After three days. Yeah. Uh, rise again. Uh, the apostles cite 46, Psalm 46.10 to show that God would not his holy one to undergo corruption. Yeah. Okay. He said this plainly. In contrast to his public teaching with parable in parables, the twelve privately received plain instruction. Um, see John sixteen twenty five and twenty nine. Jesus' clear private teaching will become the basis of his disciples' public preaching after his resurrection and outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Peter began to rebuke him. When even Peter leader among the twelve fails to accept that the Messiah must suffer, one can appreciate the wisdom of Jesus' secrecy regarding his messia messianic office. Paul's remark that for many, the word of the cross is folly. Um, yeah. We're, uh, so 1 Corinthians one eighteen says, For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Christ, and then uh, wants us to see Galatians 3.13, says, Christ redeemed us, redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree. Okay, and then this section says, Get behind me, Satan. Satan is now wor at work even among Jesus' disciples, not only in Judas, but even in Peter, whose invention, if successful, will annul the plan of redemption and accomplish Satan's goal. Yikes. Thank God it's not. God, no one can thwart God's plans. Um, but yeah. That's crazy. Uh, needed to be he needed to be regenerated through the Holy Spirit. Okay. Um so thirty four. Take up his cross. Condemned prisoners in the first century were generally made to carry the crossbar of their cross to the site of execution. The suffering that awaits the Christ in Jerusalem, as he predicts to his disciples, sets the pattern for the experience of all who follow him. Yep. Condemned prisoners in the first century were generally made to carry the crossbar of their cross on the site of execution. The suffering that awaits Christ, the Christ in Jerusalem, as he predicts to his disciples, sets the pattern for the experience of all who follow him. Yeah, count the cost. It, Jesus is worth it, though. He's so worth it. Um, in return for his soul, no monetary or material value can be placed on this, to which Jesus is is to which Jesus is perhaps alluding. Oh, like to the Psalm 4, 7, 10. Uh, as costly as it is to persevere as Jesus' disciple, the consequences of shrinking back in shame are infinitely, eternally worse. So true. The glory of his Father. Though in the present time of humiliation, the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head, one day he will be revealed as revealed with divine splendor as the son of God. But yeah, I would just say really meditate on this passage. Specifically, something that stuck out to me was this part and how in Colossians 3 uh, verse 2, it says, set your mind on things above, not on earthly things, um, like setting your, your eyes on Christ. Um, and I would recommend actually just even going to Colossians 3 right now. Um, and reading that section, but yeah, um, 
And don't set your mind on the things of man. Set your mind on the things of God. Don't, don't be like Satan. Be like God. Be like Jesus. Hunger and thirst after doing God's will, not your will. Not trash and man-centered thinking, but God-centered thinking. Um, and yeah, deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow Jesus. He's so much better than anything. Abide in him. Um, cling to him. If you try to save your life in this world, you'll lose it. However, whoever loses their life, like, for God's sake and the gospel, for the gospel's sake, will save it. So live, living for Jesus and for his gospel is the best way to live um, because Jesus is worth it and his love is you know, his, he's just amazing that, that he would die on the cross for us. And what, what could I do? What, what else would I do? I don't, I don't want to do anything else. I just want to enjoy him forever. Um, glorify him and enjoy him forever. Uh, but yeah, what, for what does it profit a man to gain the world and forfeit his soul? What, for what can a man give in return for his soul? Nothing. You can gain the world and it mean absolutely nothing. And your life ends one day. And who are you going to face? God. What can a man give in exchange for his soul? Nothing. You can't pay God for salvation. You collect money your whole life and then what? You just die and go to hell. What's the point of that? And even, even if you do that you're not going to have true joy here on this side of things because you were made for your creator you were made for jesus what like it's just sad i you know it's not what we're created for we're created to know god to love god to enjoy god um and we're so depraved that we we <laughs> we sinned and fell short and couldn't couldn't even do that so jesus had to come and die he had to suffer for us in our place so that we could repent of our sinfulness of our selfishness and have him as our father as our uh, you know and now we can live with him enjoying him living life for self is so awful it's so it doesn't lead to life it leads to just death and anxiety and just trash but living for god with god with the one that created you that you know it's just yeah god is so good um so yeah and if you're a christian why would you be ashamed of him in his words um don't be ashamed don't be ashamed of the gospel. Don't be ashamed of him. Be willing to lose your life for his sake. Literally and in the small and the big things. Like you think of like a wife and their and the husband, a, a wife and her husband. And the husband says or the wife says, "I love you" or whatever, and I would die for you. But the the wife or let's I don't know. I guess, yeah, we'll, we'll use that example. But the wife isn't even willing to, uh, I don't know, like, like, clean up after herself or something, like, or clean up after her, after whatever, you know, she's not willing to do something small and vice versa for the man. And, and, the, and they're saying to each other, oh, I'd die for you. Well, like, you're not even willing to do this small thing and you're saying you'll die for the person? Like, okay, <laughs> we, we, if we say we love Jesus, it's not, <sighs> love him with your whole heart, your whole mind, your whole soul. And when you fall short, pray, ask the Lord that you would grow. Don't live in that though. Don't live in just, and just like, I don't know, you know, live in Jesus, live, live praying. Yes. Um, but not being comfortable with 
not loving him the way he deserves, want to grow in him, accept his forgiveness, and continue to grow in loving him and in hating sin and um, enjoying him. Uh, be willing to lose your life in the big ways and in the small ways. Um, serve Christ, not man. Have no fear of man. Only love for Christ. Reverence for God. Um, don't be ashamed of him. Don't be ashamed of him. Because it's, it's an evidence of something's not right. Um, so yeah. Let's, let's close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today. God, um, please help us to pick up our cross and follow you and love you and, and live in light of your love and what you've done on the cross, that you died for sinners like us, Lord. Would you give us the gifts of repentance and faith? Would you grow us in sanctification, help us to love you? Um, to grow in you, to, um, yeah, please, please help us, Lord. Um, help us to continue to meditate on the things that we read today, Lord. Thank you that you are the God who sees, Lord. Thank you that you are omnipresent, omniscient, all-knowing. Um, thank you that you made a way for wicked sinners like us to be reconciled back to a holy God like you. That you... Thank you, Jesus, that you came to die for sinners like us and you rose up from the grave so that we um, could be reconciled back to, to God who is holy, that you are, God, that you are just. And you are the just, you are just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus, that you made a way for um, the wicked to be justified in, in a holy way because you died in our place, Lord. Thank you for your substitutionary atonement, Lord. Um, would you please continue to grow us in you, uh, grow us in love for you, Lord, and continue to just um, use us for your glory, Lord. In Jesus' name, um, thank you for everything. Amen. All right, well, uh, grace and peace. Um, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, see you all next video.